fooling myself a room But you ain't looking at no other dudes Cause you love me Today I'm on the hunt for a suit or jacket that I can update into a blazer skirt set. It's a little shout out to all the girl bosses, Clueless, and Fall Weather. Many of you have requested a blazer video for years, but I'm still really intimidated by them. So today is a baby step to build my confidence. We're gonna see if I can DIY a skirt suit from a gem I find at Valley Village. I really hope it works out. I'm actually really happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Value Village to talk about the wastewater involved in new clothing. As many of you know, the fashion industry is painfully wasteful, and when I make my clothes here, I get to show the work and the materials, so you might consider it before you shop, especially fast fashion. Just to make a brand new t-shirt alone produces over 2,000 liters of wastewater, so if you can thrift a little more, reuse your clothes a little more it makes a difference every time for nine dollars and 99 cents today's value village find was this blazer with matching maxi skirt something i have never seen before but i love the tiny plaid the olive green the shoulders fit pretty nicely i might even keep the pads in and the skirt has this great button detail on the front uh, but the skirt does not fit me at the waist, as you can see. I really want to shorten it to more of a mini length, and the blazer has a very cheap lining job at the sleeve. It's just this black fabric, it's not even long enough to let me flip the cuff, and with everything else being so muted, I wish the lining could be a bit more fun. Okay. Let's begin. We'll start with the waist. When I put on the skirt, I could pinch in about three and a half centimeters from both sides. So I flipped it inside out, measured three and a half centimeters, put in some pins, and I'm gonna sew with a straight stitch from the waist, kind of tapering it out to the hip. And later, if that's still too wide, I can adjust it. Trying it on to see if we hit the spot. Yeah, it's not bad. There is room for food. We good. I think I will cut off one button and then finish off the edge and see how we feel about that. With the measuring tape, I made chalk markings all along the front of the skirt so that the length would stay consistent with the waistline. And then I cut off the excess fabric from the front and the back, trying to keep things as straight as possible. There it is. The one button that didn't make the cut. And here's what we're dealing with now. I think I'm gonna actually thin it out as well on the sides, cause like, obviously I can walk comfortably and I don't need all this fabric. The more fabric there is, the more scary it is when the wind blows because it's just gonna go all over the place. As I mentioned, I found that it flared out way too much to be a nice A-line shape. So I flipped it inside out and did a straight stitch all along the side to bring it in. I just finished the seam on here and popped it onto the seamer to straighten out all these wrinkles. But now looking at it, I kind of regret going the route of doing this like simple fold over seam. seam. I feel like it doesn't look as professional. And so I'm really considering undoing it to give it a proper, uh, like kind of like how dress pants work. Cause that way it would match the blazer better and it would look a bit more professional. That will be my project tomorrow. You're looking okay so far. Gonna try to make you look better. <sighs> Nobody likes seam ripping. I would not wish this on like anyone. I don't think I have my most hated enemies, but if they exist, I would not even wish this on you. This sucks, but we put up with it. If anyone has invented a way to make seam ripping tolerable or even enjoyable, please let me know. I hate it so much. Okay, this is the bottom of the skirt that I had previously completely cut off. It already has this nice strip of fabric along the bottom edge that I can use to help hem my new skirt. So I used a seam ripper to open it up a little bit on the side, and then I went in with my scissors to cut this strip free 
from the skirt bottom. This is what I ended up with, about one centimeter of raw folded in fabric, and the larger side has a completely surged edge, so it's not going to fray and it's all nice and clean and ready to use. With the right side of the skirt facing me, I opened up the fold and pinned it right sides together, raw sides touching, all the way around the skirt. As closely as possible, I sewed a straight stitch all along that folded ditch, and then after going all the way around the skirt, I tucked the flap to the inside of the skirt and ironed it all nice and flat. If your sewing machine has a blind hem foot, I really encourage you to try it out because it's pretty cool and not that intimidating. So I swapped mine in and I'll put a link in the description if you want to see a really really high detail of how this works. Under my right hand is that little flap of fabric that we added and under my left hand is the skirt folded. And basically because it does a tiny stitch every once in a while from the outside you can't really see that there's a stitch there. This is used for formal wear, business wear, to help hold a hem in place without showing where the stitching is, and that's what makes it look nice and crisp and professional. Unfortunately, if you don't have a blind hem foot, you will have to do this by hand, and it just involves picking up a little bit of the fabric every two centimeters or so, so that no continuous stitch can be seen from the outside. I'm so excited to show you how the skirt turned out, but the last step involves this jacket. I wanted to take out this lining because it's black and not very exciting, and it's so short that you can't even fold up the end of the cuff. So I just reached in there, tried to get as close to the seam as possible, and used a pair of scissors to cut the entire piece out. Then I placed this lining on the fabric that I actually wanted to use for my lining, and it's this pretty pastel pink. As you can see, one side of the lining is completely surged, which is nice, so it won't fray. And so to take advantage of the finished edge of the pink fabric I was working with, I lined it up so that I could trace the entire shape of the lining, but have all this extra fabric that had a finished edge at the bottom, and that helps my lining to go deeper into my sleeve, giving me enough fabric to fold up the cuffs. Once I had my new lining cut out, I made a symmetrical piece to go on the other sleeve, and now these are ready to be inserted to the jacket. First up, I folded these to be right sides together and sewed them with a straight stitch to form a tube. I started at the edge that was finished, not the raw edge, because I wanted the edge that was finished to line up nicely. I did cut off some of the excess fabric so that it would be a nice and uniform tube and repeated that with the other piece of lining. I slipped this over the sleeve and pinned this right sides together to the inside of the sleeve, making sure that I was pinning the raw edge of the lining so that after it's all sewn up, it will totally disappear. All of that was sewn together with a straight stitch all the way around and here's how it looked when I was done. I made sure that I sewed even further in than where the black lining originally was so that that way when we flip it to take a look, no trace of the black lining is left since I've completely covered it all up. I shoved all the lining inside the sleeve and then reached in from the armhole to pull the entire sleeve inside out. This let me fold the sleeve back so that I could do another blind hem and attach it to the inside of the sleeve. Without that blind hem, I'll run the risk of pushing out the lining every single time I insert my arm. I wanna make sure it's all attached to the wall so that my hand goes straight through the sleeve tube. To secure the fabric and make sure everything was lying nice and flat, I did a set of pins all the way around the middle-ish of the tube just to make sure it was locked up. Then I partially tucked it back in, letting just a centimeter of the lining poke out. This is to help me do the stitch with my blind hem foot. I pinned that all the way around and then took it to the machine. This blind hem might be a little bit easier to see than the one I did on the skirt since now we have contrasting fabric. But again, if you look, the needle sews a couple of stitches along the pink lining fabric, which is invisible to the outside, and then once in a while hops over to the left where it does one tiny stitch on the plaid fabric, which is visible on the outside. Once this is done all the way around the sleeve, the lining is completely attached to the sleeve, but on the outside you can't tell because it's only a tiny stitch every once in a while. And with that, we have arrived at the good old before. Let's take it in and after.
Don't you know my My love ain't for free, yeah My love ain't for free, nah My love ain't for free, no You got to Give yourself to me, yeah Give yourself to me, yeah Give yourself to me Always trying to get the best of you But that moonlight bring the best in you Vibe is heavy, I don't wanna lose It's feeling reassures no need let me know if you liked this thrift update and if there's anything you want to see me try next time. Don't say blazers. I'm still scared. If you haven't found me on Instagram yet, it is at with Wendy and there will be plenty more photos of this outfit as well as everything that I've made in the past. You will also get to see some photos from when I visited the Value Village art installation in Toronto for Waste Reduction Week. They set up a huge spill of clothing to look like water and this was to talk about the amount of wastewater involved in manufacturing new clothing. In many cases, thrifting is a better alternative than buying new clothes. I know it can be a bit intimidating, but my experience is that it's really fun and when everything you wear is making an impact, thrifting feels really good. I actually shared my thoughts on this along with Cassie and Richie from Two the Nines in a previous video when we went thrifting for primary colors as a challenge. If you want to see that video, I will put a link in the description and it's also here. As always, if you end up trying any of my tutorials, please use the hashtag madewithwendy so I can see it. Thank you so much for watching and oh, someone outside just sneezed really loudly. Thank you so much for watching and if you're subscribed, I'll see you next time. Bye! Switching on me, how you change? I'm not playing fair.